What's up, everybody? It's your favorite transports, favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the Transformers Arc. This is on loan to me from Paul C. Very good dude. Known him for a while. He buys a lot of the mainline stuff. A lot of the mainline stuff that we've looked at has come directly from him. And this is no exception, right? And so we're going to look at it. Even though I got a feeling it's going to be a pain. I'll tell you, I built this large review space in order to help me with some of the larger stuff that I've, you know, started looking at, like hot toys and so forth. And then the moment that I build it, they start putting out bigger stuff. But this is still kind of somewhat fitting in there. So we're going to talk about this guy, but in order to do so we need to talk about accessories before we get into accessories I do want to point out that this flap here opens and brings out this kind of flight deck uh, command post for the alt mode and I just didn't notice it I didn't realize it until I went to transform it and I had already started filming so uh, when I talk about the alt mode just know that this piece here is supposed to be out it's and it, it, it does add something to it it doesn't look as flat I guess um, but yeah that's where that goes. And it helps keep it kind of solidified as well. Accessory-wise, it does come with these four translucent uh, blast effects. They go, they're actually really nicely deco. They go from like a really light green to like almost like a blue green down at the bottom. They're, they're quite nice. Like they're, they're pretty. Do you know what I mean? Um, softer plastic. Nothing really to write home about. You can plug them into the thrusters of the ship. However, being as though they're not all the same size or uh, whatever, you can double up, but even then you're only left with two workable, usable ones. So it's like, it ends up becoming like, it, you're, it, they're either going to be offset, right? Because there are four thrusters, and I don't mean the Migos, but they're either gonna be offset or you're gonna have two that are really firing and then two that are not. So I, I feel like they could have doubled up here with, with, with minimal cost to them. Another basically accessory is this which i believe they call mainframe it's actually the flight deck of the arc i'll show you how to access it when we get to transformation um these squares here i'm guessing are for the unicron scaling figures that came with that guy because they had those little like square tabs there and then it has this little kind of circle thing that's in translucent which actually looks pretty cool some arc detailings i mean um teletran one detailings and such and then just sort of an abstract shape to sit it where it needs to go for the uh, for the rocket ship or for the arc. So let's go ahead and get him transformed. Untab the legs, bring them down, rotate the waist 180, open the legs. You want to open up these flaps here, spin the foot 180, and then just put that back, I guess, and they leave that whole back section completely hollow, which is pretty weak. Uh, untab your arms here. They're tabbed into the side. That will allow you to detach the backpack. Pull the head up, so to speak. The head goes back around. The backpack tabs back in. Much like the feet, you just pull back the panel here. Flip the hand down. Pull back the panel. Flip the hand down. And... <laughs> I mean, that's this guy, right? Yeesh. Uh, we'll go ahead and get him cleaned up, and then we'll take a look at him. Uh, not the strongest offering, right? Uh, big old backpack that pretty much houses the only usable part for the arc. Um, hollow bits throughout. Just nothing, nothing really to write home about. Uh, the head uses light piping, a very small inlet for light to actually reach through. So most of the time, it just looks like a piece of translucent plastic. Gray paint is done on there, and the head swivels. Decent sculpt work, though. Then the shoulders are basically uh, universals. They'll get you out to 90 degrees. They'll spin around until you bump into the backpack more than you would ever need. Bicep swivel, single hinged elbow that gets you 90 degrees, and wrist goes up and down mainly due to transformation. Not a single paint app on them arms. We do get, oh, I'm sorry, I misspoke. You get these little numbers here. For the chest, we get the silver and yellow detailings, which actually look pretty good. You get the slightest bit of a waist swivel, but nothing to write home about because of the backpack. Pinned universals for hips that get you the full Van Dam. Uh, they get you pretty far out and ahead. Uh, thigh swivel, hollow bits, single hinge knee that gets you, well, due to the backpack, hardly anything, but if you lift up, you can get 90 degrees. Some nice detailings there on the side and on the knee. Um, kind of an E for effort sort of deal. And then you get an ankle rocker. So, meh. 
size comparison wise, there he is next to my custom seeker from Input. So about the same size as a seeker, a little taller. But this guy does have a third mode that's actually kind of cool. <clears throat> so take the backpack and break it away and tuck the head in. Pull this guy out. We'll talk about him here in a bit. He plugs in right there. And rotate here at the waist. This time we're going to take our panels on our legs and then fully extend them. And turn the feet so that he's doing like a duck walk. And tab that together. Then you want to kind of have him sit into himself. And let's see, what do we do here? Open these up. We'll get these out of the way here too. They're, they're separate little uh, accessories. And these like square U pieces fit into the kneecaps of the bot. And then there's panels here on the back that come up and kind of go over these panels or uh, these tabs here that are on like the main keyboard but it doesn't it doesn't really kind of solidify itself the way that you you feel like it should but uh, i'll continue we're gonna go up and over here too and make sure that that's good to go all right now we're gonna bring down our arms we'll open that up Move this. We have a male and a female here to a male and a female there. And I can't really see. There we go. And same on this side. Tuck in the hand. Male to female. Male to female. And that's basically it. Make sure these hands are down. I thought I did that already. Uh, I'll get it cleaned up. We'll take a look at it. And, I mean, it's pretty much clean. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think this is cool. I think this is a cool idea. And I think it's kind of cool how they en encompassed all of it. Like, I'll give it that. I think it earned that. The paint detailings here are nice enough. Um, it doesn't really lock together in any great way. It, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's fine. Um, and, of course, like, it, it only really works from a very specific angle. And probably anybody with a, an X-Acto knife, um, a retractable blade, a piece of styrofoam, and some acrylic paint could do a much better job making a Teletran one for their display than this is. I do think that conceptually it's a pretty cool idea. And to give you an idea of how it looks like, it's, it's always going to be a little small. It's probably going to work better for your, your kind of smaller scale figures. Um, but, yeah, I think it's decent. Now, during that, you probably saw these. These are like the golden discs, a la Beast Wars. You got all sorts of symbols on there, and they do have a paint of, or a, a coat of gold paint on them. And then, of course, you can stack them together, put them here, and that's going to be their, their kind of place. And as you saw, it doesn't take much for them to kind of come unlocked from that place. And then, of course, you saw this as well, the repair, repair, explore, explore. And that's actually kind of cool, and I, I can't describe how or why, but it's somewhat rewarding to own, I would imagine. I don't own this, but uh, the silver paint on there is pretty cool, and then you get the little wings that move, and that's about it, and then you saw where it's stored. All right, so let's get started. We'll go ahead and get the size comparison straight out of the way. There it is with Tiger Tracks, so massive unit, but has tons of paint deco. Some of it good, some of it not so. All of the guns here are painted. None of the guns move, which seems like a huge oversight to me. Um, the yellow here and the gray here are not painted. The yellow on the accents are painted. The blue is painted, and actually the blue looks quite nice. And then this is supposed to be wear and tear that's painted on. It doesn't look like wear and tear. It, it looks like somebody dipped it in some mess. And then the Autobot symbols are painted on which is nice <clears throat> we have translucent plastic here that allows you to see into the cockpit and let's see what else we have actually really nice paint on the back that looks like airbrush paint to me um, with the thrusters going from the light blue to the darker blue so that actually is quite nice in the midst of a lot of it kind of being average at best right now, the, the paint detailings are nice for the most part with the exception of the wear and tear it's just there's not a ton of them uh, let's see what we have uh, we have this landing gear here. Whoa. Whoa, mama. 
<laughs> um, as I go on there, let's see if I can't. There we go. Um, we have a, a, a boarding ramp that is spring loaded. So I think that's supposed to activate it. There we go. Nice enough. You get the working pistons and stuff. No, no real issues there. We'll look at the underside of it. This is where the landing gear are, if that's what you want to call it. They're basically just flip out panels that act as such. Um, you can see a good bit of the robot bits underneath. Not the biggest deal in the world since it, the top of it mainly covers it and you won't be looking at it from underneath for the most part unless you have it hanging, I guess. Um, and once again, kind of the same deal. The paint accents is nice. Tons of sculpted detail as well, so no issues there. And this splits down the center for the legs, which is somewhat of an issue. The silver paint looks nice. And I say only somewhat of an issue because I, I do have a hard time getting the vehicle mode to sort of stay stuck together. Um, but outside of that, it's not bad uh, as an arc. It's a little smaller than I would expect. Now, I know after seeing Tiger Tracks, you'd be like, what? what? It looked big, nice Tiger Tracks, and maybe that's true, but uh, it's only 18 inches, uh, which, you know, is it's fine, but not for not for an arc. Uh, and then it's about 17 inches at its widest base. So I will say that, like, at one point I was like, man, this might be worth getting if you were, like, a third-party Legends collector and you wanted to hit. But it's, it's, I, I really don't see how this fits in. The, the scale is so off. And it's always going to be off, right? Because it would be ridiculous to have something that would be big enough to be the actual arc. However, I do think they could have gone a step higher than this, a step bigger than this. It still maintained the structural integrity, still maintained the playability factor, and had it lend itself to a more usable component to a lot of people's collections. Let's get it transformed. So unlock these panels here underneath towards the nose cone of it which will allow you to bring up this entire section. We'll tuck that underneath for the time being, and then we'll go ahead and take this guy out. And a lot of this went off camera, so I'm just going to reshow it. Clip this in. Clip this in. In, in, out. And this is the second time that that's fallen off on me. Uh, but you want it to be like this. And then down. Arm up, over, and they'll lock in place. It's subtle, um, but up, and then over. And let's go ahead and spin the waist 180. Let me see if I can get these arms down, extend them, pull your hands out. And we'll do the same for the other side. Extend. As you pull the hand out, uh, this piece here does fill in the void, which is kind of cool. And there we go. Make sure that the uh, shoulders are kind of in the proper place. There. All right, so now moving on to the legs. We'll tuck this piece away that I'd forgot about down into there. And then you just split them, extend them, rotate them to the front. On the bottom, the will come down and tab back in on both sides. On the back, make sure your nose cone comes down and tabs in. It actually tabs in the back flap into one spot and then the the forward facing flap into two. And then the last step is relatively counterintuitive, but you're mainly plugging this into the to the shoulders. Like this whole flap, you would think it would come down and sort of encapsulate all of it. It really doesn't. It grabs a hold to the shoulders and that's it. You're kind of left with all that gappiness underneath and like a weird angle on the sides, which is, eh, it's not, it wouldn't be how I would want to do business. Rotate the arms this way, this way, and that way and then sort your hands out and then same for the other side down down spin spin i'll clean them up we'll take a look at them all right so there he is uh we'll try to go through this it's not going to be easy but we will try. Uh, the face sculpt, uh, I'm guessing it looks how they want it to look. It does have light piping, but it does pick it up better, I'm guessing, because the inlet is a lot larger than what we saw with mainframe. Articula it has silver paint and gray paint on him. Some decent sculpt work. 
and we're left with pretty much a swivel, uh, which is unfortunate given the price and size of this guy. I don't see any reason why they couldn't put more engineering there, especially to get a good downward look for a bot this size. All right, so we'll continue. Ratcheted everything in the arms. 360. Greater than 90 out to the side. I hope you can see all that. Nice Autobot symbol there on the shoulders. Ratcheted bicep. Ratcheted elbow on a single hinge that gets you more than 90 degrees. Wrist swivel. Also ratcheted, soft ratchet. Thumb is on a hinge. Fingers are on a base pin knuckle. Hollow as my mother's soul underneath. Same for the other side. Now, waist articulation. Ratcheted also. I'm not going over the articulation, I mean the um, the paint accents uh, on the rest of it because most of it, the paint you know from the ship that we've already kind of talked about. So let's get into the lower legs a bit. Uh, we do get the silver here on these ratcheted hips that gets you more than the Van Dam and more than the Full Monty. You also get a ratcheted thigh swivel and the knee Single hinge, ratcheted, gets you greater than 90 degrees due to the transformation. The Autobot symbol comes through nicely in both modes. You get an ankle tilt down, but you're breaking the transformation, but I think that's okay. And then you get a, a limited ankle rocker, but it is there. The paint, once again, comes through nicely. And being as though this is where they spent the majority of quality on their paint, it's nice that you get it to pay off in both modes, because that's not always the case. And there it is from the back, and it really does kind of uh, fill in, so it doesn't leave as, as waffly as you would possibly imagine. Um, look, it's okay. It, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, mediocrity is sort of running rampant these days, I feel. But uh, this would be no exception. It's sort of it's sort of fine. There's some things that it has going for it. There's some things that it kind of just seemingly doesn't care too much about, and it shows. And what you're left with is something that's ultimately... Um, various degrees of okay size comparison wise there it is with the seeker again so once you know it's going to be a nice size bot for your collection and if you're going this route final thoughts wise we'll start with the negatives my negatives really are like this thing is like big and yellow and dumb I, i'll be honest with you that's my first impression of it it has some cool things about it and we're going to get to it don't get me wrong but it's like it just comes across so cheap because it doesn't have a lot of love put into it deco wise. And there's more than enough room for it. But in the alt mode, it pretty much just looks like a piece of cheese. And then in robot mode, it looks like a piece of cheese that's gone bad in some parts. They really could have done something here. And there is some cool things about it that would have lent itself to the things they could have done. But instead they didn't. And as a result, we get this very kind of brass tacks, very sort of basic general approach to it that just seems like a get it done and get it out as opposed to any real pride, effort, energy, or love. And especially not passion that goes into it that's how i feel it comes across in the lack of paint it comes across in a lot of the hollow bits oh and for the record not just hollow bits and robot parts like the the hands and such but hollow bits in the plane or, or arc mode as well where you, you see a lot of the robot from the side uh, underneath which isn't as much a big deal but certainly from the side the silly looking paint that's supposed to be wear and tear on the front of it or on the shoulders and top of it in robot mode ratchets everywhere that's great however the engineering of it doesn't stay stuck together especially like in the chest and such the way you would like it to so as you manipulate those ratchets it has a tendency to like pop the chest out panels and flaps were popping off of this thing and popping off a of mainframe sort of left and right when i was experiencing it it just seems like a big chew toy and doesn't have the sort of elegance nor sophistication that i feel like they've even been putting into most of their mainline stuff recently perhaps a sign of things to come in regard to legacy it just seems like they did this for the sake of doing it it would have been also nice for him to have some sort of weapon perhaps i'm asking too much Positives wise, the transformation is pretty straightforward, fun and intuitive and possibly the most playable sort of Titan figure in regard to transformation. Like it seems like it would be fun to flip this guy back and forth. There's ratchets almost on every single joint. So as a result, this figure feels super sturdy and super solid. There's also a ton of line work that's gone into it. There's also a ton of interesting things that have been wrapped up in mainframe going from that sort of flight console to robot to Teletran 1. Although I don't know if they're all successful, I do acknowledge that it's interesting. And the blue paint looks great on the thrusters. So yeah, if this ends up being like the other Titan class figures that ends up at Ollie's for 25 bucks or whatever, I advise to get it then if you're interested. 
Otherwise, I don't think there's much to this. I won't miss it at all once it's out of my house, if that helps. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.